Hi everyone, how are you guys today? You guys, we are live here on the Redesign with Prima Facebook page and my name is Brandy. I'm the owner and artist behind Brush by Brandy. And um, I am here, we're gonna work on a project live today. My husband, Sean, is here behind the camera to help answer any questions. So as we go through the project, let me know if you're curious about anything and we'll answer those also. Um, we are going to show off the brand new release decoupage papers from Redesign with Prima. Um, I've got a project that we're going to work on and also we're going to be using the new uh, stencil release from Redesign also. So um, this is the project that I'm working on. It's actually a jewelry armoire and I chose this piece uh, because it's got all these small frames on it which makes it ideal for decoupage. We're going to do two different ways. Putting decoupage inside a frame like this when you've got molding surrounding, surrounding it which I like because it always hides those edges inside of a nice frame but we're also going to do it on a wide open surface that doesn't have that frame and show you it can be done either way. And then we're gonna do some layering with the, the new stencils. So um, the, the papers that I'm gonna be using are some of the new release papers and one of them is called Delicate Charm. And let me show you the designs that come in this package. Um, I'm gonna show them up, to, up against my project just so you can see it against the white background. So this is called Delicate Charm, and it's a package of three coordinating papers. Mine's been cut. Yours will not come pre-cut like that. Sorry, it's not a feature of them. Um, but we're going to use this one today, and I think it's so cute. So this has some dark blues in it. It's got a bee with a crown on it inside of a wreath. Um, and then this one comes in a package that coordinates three different papers together. And I used all three of them on this project. Um, and I think it's cool because... The work, the, the work is done for you as far as coordinating, uh, mixing and matching colors. So you know in each package, the designs are going to work together. So this is the second uh, pattern that's inside the package of Delicate Charm. It's a pink sort of damask pattern. Uh, we're gonna use this one on this piece also. And then the third one in this package, I'm gonna have to apologize because I have largely used this one. In fact, do you wanna maybe, can you grab me my project? I can show you this tiny little piece right here because that's about all I have left, which is a good sign. It means I liked it. Um, but this is a gray background and it's got a similar uh, B pattern. If you guys were live with me on my Facebook page last night, we worked on this project right here. And this is a baby's changing table. We laid, this is the third paper that's in that uh, package. So you can see a really cute design. We laid this in this changing table and then we have a bee and I added some honeycomb because there is a bee design in the paper. So it was a really cute background. I'm gonna finish painting this up and then this will be another project as well. But this is that third pattern that comes in that same package. And if you wanna see that live, uh, you can head over to uh, the Brush by Brandy Facebook page and that is all up from last night. We worked on that last night together. Okay, so you guys wanna lay some new papers? <coughs> So I am doing on this piece sort of a, it, my inspiration for it was sort of a um, patchwork quilt design. And so I've got a whole bunch of different patterns mixed. Uh, you guys saw on my page, I posted photos of this side right here because it's really pretty. And a lot of people asked me what it was. Well, this lace pattern here is one of the new papers and it's decoupage onto the outside. And then I overlaid a stencil over top in a pearlescent um, paste. And we're gonna do that today. Um, but you can see how the papers and the stencils can be layered to create these really pretty designs. And this is pearlescent, so it catches the light really pretty. It's always really hard to catch metallics on camera, but in person, especially when this moves in the light, you can see how it just shimmers off of the pearlescent. So, can you keep moving it? Can you move it somewhere? Does that help you? Yeah. yeah. Just I also did another one on the inside. So there's a peak on the outside, and then when you open it on the inside, it also coordinates. So, so we're going to apply some of these papers first, and then I'll show you that layering with the stencil. All right. I just want to throw a shout out to some best friends of mine. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Your best friends are Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sharon. Your mom. Haley. Yeah. <laughs> My mom's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sherry. Hi, guys. Hi, Sharon. Hi, uh, Sherry. Hi. Uh... Haley, read us Oh, name. Haley's on. Oh, yeah. Hey, Haley. Um, okay, so we're going to do this side. Let's go ahead and do this section here first. And I talked to you a little bit about applying um, the decoupage paper when you don't have a frame around the outside like these little drawers here. 
So I'm actually going to use uh, some of the redesign with Prima Decoupage Gel, and I almost want to cry because I'm I'm super low on it. Can you guys see how skinny my? I'm trying to finish this project with it, but I think I'm going to run out. Um, I like this decoupage gel, especially with these papers, because they have a light texture to them. So it um, it kind of fills that texture and gives you this really smooth finish uh, when you seal in the decoupage gel. So I'm going to start by taking some of the decoupage gel on, on my brush. And I'm just using a Wooster brush. This is an inexpensive brush. Uh, the decoupage gel is really thick and creamy, so you don't want to let it dry in your brush. It can, can be hard to wash out. If you wash it out while it's fresh, it's super easy. I made the mistake of letting it dry in there. So I'm not going to use one of my nice brushes because I'm live and so I'm going to be chatting and then it's going to end up some, uh, drying some in my brush. But I just take some on my brush and it's a paste so it's not going to drip or run and I'm just going to brush it on to my project. And I want a pretty ample coat. I want to try to get it even, no clumps in there. I've got a couple little, little nuggets from my package. I'm going to brush it right up to the edge of this bottom. Okay, make sure I got it nice and even. I don't want any chunks because that can show through and cause texture in your paper. And then once I've got a coat of that on, I'm just going to lay my paper on. And the only thing I want to be careful of is I have the orientation the same as the other side. So I want to watch that. All right. What, really quick, what, what do you think the open time is on that gel? It's pretty quick. It, it, it doesn't have a super long open time. So you want to get it on there and then get your paper in there pretty quickly. I would say only, only like five minutes that you have to work with it. So don't put it on and then think that you can kind of mess around with your paper and decide your orientation. You kind of want to have all your details worked out before you put the gel on so that you can get your paper in there while it's nice and fresh. Okay, and then I'm going to find my 90 degree corner. The nice thing about this is I can I can push this paper into my decoupage gel and then I can pull it back and I can push it back in. So if I get my placement wrong, there's not a lot of pressure. So over here, I kind of want to match this up to the side a little bit straighter. And then I'm going to fix the top too. All right. And once I've got a good 90 degree corner, I'm really happy with this right here. I'm going to take and I'm going to press this down working from one edge outward. And this presses out some of these uh, these wrinkles that show up in the paper from the packaging. They will press out um, it, when you're laying them in the decoupage gel. So I don't, you can use a clothing steamer on them to get those wrinkles out beforehand. But you'll notice, I mean, I had a wrinkle right here from where it's folded in the package and it's not even visible at all. So I get that all laid in there. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is cut my paper. There's a couple different things I, ways I can cut my paper on this one. So I'm going to use down here because I've got a molding underneath the skirting of my furniture piece. I'm just going to use a sharp razor knife. You want it to be really sharp. I'm going to write it right along the edge of that molding. It's like they knew ahead of time. <laughs> yeah. The, fold. They, <laughs> oh yeah. The fold for the, on that, in that case, the crease from the packaging happened to be right in the crease. So I just cut right along there. And then over here, I don't have a molding alongside. So I'm going to show you another way that you can cut the paper. And that's with a sanding block. This is a 80 grit. Um, it's a new one. And I like these ones that have the detail edge on them, which is kind of like a, um, it's a parallelogram. Yeah. Where, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. <laughs> where, where, my, uh, whoa. where my geometry teacher's at. All right. And you can, uh, you can go on the edge of the paper and you just want to go one direction. Wait for it. I'm waiting. <laughs> and I'm just going to score the paper with the sanding block. And when I create that perforation, it's just going to pull away. I only go in one direction because if you saw back and forth, you're going to be pulling your paper off as you're uh, cutting that edge. So I'm only going to go in that single direction. And this gives me a nice, clean, crisp edge over here. All right. And then it meets up, I've also got a paper on the back of this, which is a different design. So it meets up at a nice 90 degree corner right there. And then once I've got this design on, I'm going to take my same decoupage gel, my same brush, and I'm going to again, brush it over top. And this is going to seal that paper in. And this gel is nice and thick. So, so this paper has a light texture to it. And this will sort of fill that texture and give you a smooth, soft, buttery finish. 
So even if you decide that, say, um, if you have a painted piece and you want the sheen to match on your entire piece, you don't want to seal the whole thing in the decoupage gel, you can do the decoupage gel and then put your regular clear coat over top and it'll give you that smoothness of the decoupage and then you can make the sheen match by putting your clear coat over top. This is a water-based gel. And I make sure that I kind of work it into that paper because I want it to meet up with the decoupage gel from underneath and they're gonna encapsulate that paper and really create a bond that adheres it to the surface. And I know that this stuff works uh, because I've had to uh, remove these papers too. You're throwing out all these big words. I'm looking for a thesaurus. Oh yeah? Like you have one out here. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally too. keep a thesaurus <laughs> in my workspace. It's always important to, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to ever use the same word too much on one of my lives. All right, and then I'm just gonna go over this little corner right here and make sure I get a nice good bond on that corner bead. Cause remember, this is one of those areas that I don't have um, a frame around it. I've got a little corner right here where I feel like I need, I need a little bit more decoupage gel underneath. So I'm just gonna lift that corner. I can already feel that if I try to pull on this, it's starting to bond that decoupage gel setting up. So you guys had asked how quickly it sets up. If I were to pull this, there's some resistance there. But this little corner is a little loose and so i just am able to pull it back and then go ahead and seat it back down again and i want to make sure i get that that corner especially where these don't have a frame to protect the edges that the edges are nice and seated so let's come here and i'll show you the same process but doing it on an area like one of these squares here that does have a frame around it so what I plan to do here is each side, these aren't gonna match. So I could also do it where it was alternating, like say I have the pink here and then I put a blue next to it and I have the beige and I'm gonna put a pink, um, but I, instead I'm gonna keep it pretty consistent and I'm gonna keep it matching all the way down. So this design here is this paper. And I think I used- <laughs> like, I, Good luck, Sharon. What? We need Sean to demo too. Yeah, <laughs> Sean will. You don't he's, don't say demo and Sean together. Oh it's a yeah, totally different he demo. He takes it as yeah, different kind of demo, mm -hmm. like hammer demo. All right. So uh, one thing about this piece is it does have these screws here. This is a jewelry armoire. So let me show you inside the drawers. They're velvet lined. I would have to make a hole in this velvet. It was applied after the screws were put in, so I would have to make a hole in it to pull those screws out. So I went ahead and left the screws in and I'm just applying my decoupage around that. So what I'm going to do is I still have my piece. I, I did my dry fitting to find my placement because I want to make sure that I've got that kind of figured out. I know that this is the corner I want to use because it kind of matches up with the pattern over here and they're both facing the same direction. So my pattern is running vertically on both. So I always try to make sure I know that stuff beforehand. And then the coloring on this piece is similar to this spot, whereas say like this corner down here has more white in it. So I'm going to I'm going to leave that part out and I'm going to keep the coloring similar. So I'm going to do the same thing with my decoupage gel. Man, I'm so low on this. Uh, Sharon's on Sharon. I need more decoupage gel. <laughs> <laughs> um, this eight ounce container, I have decoupage on every side of this and it's going to do this whole project. So I got quite a bit out of it, but I should have gotten two and I only got one. All right, so I got a nice coat on there. And then I'm gonna take my uh, 90 degree corner and I'm gonna find the corner inside this little box. And same thing, I've got a crease right here. So I'm gonna work this one corner at a time, but my screw is in the way. So when I got to the screw, I just took my razor knife and I just scored a little X over the top of that screw. And it's going to make a little hole right in the exact right place for me. Okay, and then I can just pop that screw through. And then my hardware will screw right over the top and it will be in that decoupage. It's almost like you know what you're doing. Yeah, it's like I've done this before, like one, two, three, <laughs> four, five. Okay, and then I'm, I can take my same razor knife and I'm going to press my paper into the corners. And I'm just going to make a nice cut along those moldings. It always makes me nervous, especially doing it on camera, because right cut once and I don't know what- for the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. It's measured twice, cut once. Oh, yeah. That's oh. why you don't know. 
Yeah. Oh, is that was that other word I'm not familiar with that measuring word. What what is that? Yeah, so I don't pre I don't pre-cut. I mean, some people ask sometimes if you measure out the box and cut a square that's like 4 by 4 inches. I don't because I mean, this is never going to be perfectly square. So I prefer to lay it on there and then I'm going to go ahead and put that decoupage gel over the top. A little Okay. That's pretty long. It's probably my eyebrow. And I'm going to kind of work the decoupage gel into this paper a little bit inside this square. It's a little harder to brush an even coat on, and I want to make sure that I get it fully coated so it encapsulates that paper. All right, how's that look? And then I and then once I brushed it on and I got it nice and covered, I just clean up my brush strokes and make sure that it's not too thick or heavy in any of the corners. So I clean it up at the very end because when you're brushing it on, you can brush it any which direction. I can smush and smash it and push and you know dig it in there and get my decoupage gel on, and then I'm going to clean it up at the very end. John just had a work emergency. He's going to run away for just a minute. He does work a regular job, I promise. All right. Um, so the other thing I want to show you really quick, and then we'll come do one of the stencils. I want to show you that you can decoupage on glass too. So this is another piece that I'm working on. Let me make sure you guys can see this. I'm going to back the camera up a little bit. Okay. So this is a um, six pane window and I pick these up off like Facebook marketplace. Sometimes I'll find local people who are doing any kind of demo and I'll pick this up and I'm going to make an art piece out of it. But I thought this was a great thing that can be done with like China cabinets and stuff where you've got the glass on the outside and maybe you want to obscure some of the pieces inside by, you know, adding a pattern to that glass. So I'm going to show you how we can add a pattern to the glass and I did one square here, but you can decoupage on glass. So I'm going to flip this around to the back side and this is the side we're going to work from and I'm going to do this kind of like my um, furniture piece in that I'm going to use a whole bunch of different patterns so I'm going to find a scrap that I've got left over for my project so this is also a good way to use some scraps and I've got a big enough piece of this one here in my head I'm doing the math okay the only place I need to use this scrap is is on this square and I've got plenty left over so I'm safe to use this one I've done that before where I use it in the wrong place and then have to order more. All right, guys, the countdown begins. My jack of gel is almost gone. But this stuff shows up clear on glass. So it's not going to show like foggy or cloudy. Now, this is the gloss. So uh, you want to make sure you're using the gloss. I cleaned my glass really well. Um, and then I'm going to brush on a coat of my decoupage gel onto the glass. And I try to make it um, as consistent as possible. So I did make sure that I brushed my uh, brush strokes nice and even, just because I don't want to create like a thick spot where it might, you know, look different from the front of the glass. So I brush on a nice even coat. And then this is the back side of my glass. So I'm going to find my 90 degree corner. And this will make a really cute art piece that I can hang above this jewelry arm lot in my photos and stuff. I could even sell this as a pair to go together and they, this could go on the wall above it in a room. So you can make coordinating pieces like that in a really pretty kind of, and since my inspiration is, is a patchwork quilt, this has a really vintage design to it, a vintage feel. So I found my 90 degree corner and I placed that and I seated my paper and now I wanna go ahead and make those cuts. So I'm going to press it into the corner. I kind of score it just using my fingernails. And then I'm going to run that sharp razor knife. You don't want a dull one. Right in, sorry if you see the back of my head. Right into this corner here. Make sure I've got a good corner on there. Right, I'm going to add a little more decoupage gel. I'm being kind of stingy and I, I don't recommend that, but I'm stingy because I'm totally going to burn out. And I'm going to add a little bit more into this 90 degree corner right here. Like 
still keep my brush strokes even, but I want to get a good bond, especially in the corners. And I didn't feel like I had enough, but I'm able to pick it up and just place it back down again and make corrections like that because this paper is very forgiving. All right. So I got one side and now I'm going to come in and cut from the other side. And that'll get this bottom piece loose and then I just have to finish this corner cut. I'm going to cover with my head for a minute. I'm sorry. I need to look in there or I'm going to get a bad cut. I get one shot at this, guys. So you got to look at the back of my head for a minute. Let me know, too, if there are any of the new designs that you guys are curious about or you'd like to see out of the package or up close or anything. And I do have all the designs out that I can show you guys. Uh, this new release includes um, eight of the large A1 decoupage papers. Those look like this guy here. This one is called Wisp of Mauve, and they're this large size. So there's eight new designs of this size in the A1 decoupage paper. And then the ones I'm working on are the decoupage tissue, and those are the smaller designs that come in the packages of three like this. Okay, so we have eight of these large designs, 10 of these packs of three, and then five new stencils that I'll show you in just a second. Okay, so I've got my paper laid fully onto that glass. It looks really good. It's nice and smooth. Um, I made sure that I don't have any like lumps in it, pressed all those out. I just used my fingers for that. And then I'm gonna apply a coat of that decoupage gel to the back side of my paper. So you can imagine doing this onto a china hutch. Like this, this could obscure the glass so you have a really pretty look from outside. You can use it, you know, I see people that use china hutches for like homeschooling supplies or put uh, as a bookshelf inside. And from the outside, it looks nice and pretty. And then you can hide yours, you know, your slow cooker, your all the stuff you don't want people to see for extra storage inside by obscuring that glass a little bit. You'll see when I turn this around how pretty it looks from the other side. I'm making sure I get my decoupage gel into those corners. The other thing that's pretty cool about this is if I ever wanted to remove it, I could. So if you uh, have a vintage piece and you decide you want a new look for it, you want to change out the paper, I would, uh, you, I can pull this paper off. This one's dry and I would find a corner with a razor blade and I could pull it off and then just clean that, uh, clean the adhesive off the glass, either using a razor blade or a good cleaner and I could replace it and make a new look. Okay. So this is my uh, paper on the glass. I'm putting my, I'm going to put my hand behind it. So you can kind of see it's still semi-translucent. You can probably see the shadow of my hand. Can you see that? Can you see that? Slightly. Okay, so you can kind of see the shadow of my hand moving, <laughs> but it's obscured. You don't see what would be behind it. Like for example, if I put my piece behind it. So that's kind of a cool look. So I'm gonna finish this up using the same papers that I have on my furniture piece, and then this will be a piece of art that matches with it. All right, so I know you guys are drooling over the stencils. So let's pull one of the stencils out. So I've got this side here that I applied one of my papers the same way that we did down here on the bottom. Um, I applied this paper here. It has a lace pattern on it. Let me show you these five new stencils. All right, this is one of the designs here. And this is a really pretty brocade pattern. And this one has four corners that connect up and so you can make a continuing pattern with it. And these are thicker stencils. So they're made for raised stenciling, which means your stencil will have a light texture to it. So that's one of the new designs. We have a floral design here. Probably doesn't help for me to show it to you against this pattern background, huh? We have a floral design here. Uh, uh, this is a lavender and there's a, uh, Redesign with Prima has a lavender, uh, uh, mold, a lavender transfer. So this kind of completes the collection. Now you can make raised stencils that also go with that whole collection. We have this one here, which is two opposing acanthus leaf designs. Um, this one reminds me of one of the molds that uh, Redesign also makes. Um, so it could be used in coordination with those. You can uh, create coordinating designs, um, but this is really pretty. I like this one too. The one we're going to be using, uh, this one is called Splendid Scroll, by the way. 
All right, and this is the one we're gonna be using, which is called Royal Brocade. And I'm gonna place it over the top of my decoupage paper so you can layer your uh, stencils over the top of decoupage paper. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my center, and I'm just gonna eyeball this. That's what I did on the other side. And what, it you're not well. gonna measure? I don't measure anything. That's I weird. don't even know what that means. <laughs> All right, so once I found my center, um, I do need some painter's tape to hold my stencil up. I'm not gonna use a stencil adhesive. Um, I don't feel like I need a stencil adhesive because I'm going to be using a gel to stencil with. And when you use a thicker medium, it doesn't have that tendency to wanna seep underneath your stencil. Um, and that's when I would use a um, stencil adhesive is when I'm worried that it's going to seep underneath. So what I'm doing right now, this probably looks weird, is I'm feeling for where this edge is on the other side. Cause I wanna see, okay, it lines up with about the bottom of this drawer so that my placement coordinates with the other side of this piece also. All right, so yeah, I think right about there, it lines up with about the bottom of this drawer to the edge of this stencil is what I was feeling for on the other side. That's my scientific method right there. And then I'm gonna place some painter's tape on the edge of my stencil. This um, decoupage is already dry, you guys. So you wanna make sure that your decoupage paper underneath is nice and dry before you do the stencil over top. Number one, the tape won't wanna uh, stick. You'll uh, press the stencil into your um, decoupage gel and kind of make a mess of it. I wanna get this nice and tight. All right. And Reason Prima has a lot of good paste that you can use for stenciling with. And I'll show you a few. None of which are actually the one I want. Oh no, here it is. All right, we'll open this new package. Okay, so a couple options is Redesign has chalk paste. Chalk paste is a thick, creamy paste that's got the, con or that's got the finish that would look like a chalk paint. So it's a paste. It's not going to drip out. Um, nice and creamy and thick and it dries with a sort of matte soft finish like a chalk paint would. So this is chalk paste. And that's one option if you want the look of a paint but the consistency of a paste. Um, they have icing paste. Uh, icing paste is a metallic. Okay, so this is a gold. I leave these lids on because uh, to try to help them store better. It does want to seal across the top because it has an acrylic in it. So icing paste is metallic. And same, it's a thick, creamy paste. Doesn't want to drip or run or anything. And then I just press that plastic back down and I can store it. So this is a metallic, whereas the chalk paste is a matte, chalky finish. Um, glass bead gel is, in a, is a clear acrylic gel. like um, It's like hair gel or any kind of gel that you would think of but it has tiny little glass beads embedded in it. And so it catches the light and gives you a really shiny look. This, uh, the glass bead gel would have been a really pretty option for this piece also. Um, this is an effect paste and this one's called Golden Nugget. Let's see if I've already opened this, yeah I have. All right, and Golden Nugget, it has sort of a sandy texture to it with little flecks of gold inside. So it would have, you know, I could imagine this with maybe a little bit more like rustic look. This would also be pretty on this um, lace background, but then those little flux of gold will catch the light. It looks kind of milky in the container, but it will dry clear with just those little flux of kind of sand in it. So that's, that's a few different textures. You've got the metallic, the chalky, the glass bead gel, and then the effect paste are all options. We're going to use the metallic, uh, the icing paste. And the color I'm using is called Frosty Pearl. You know what? I haven't opened one of these on my counter. Sorry about that, guys. I was going to open a new package, but I have one already open on my counter, and I hate to have two open packages if I can avoid it. All right, so this is the icing paste. Got part of my lid on there. And it's also a smooth, creamy paste. It, um, this one is pearlescent. So it looks white in the container, but when I put it on, it's gonna have a pearlescence. 
I'm going to apply it using the scraper. And I've got a couple different options that I like for applying raised stencils, either the scraper tool, and this is a flexible spatula tool, or these are the redesign with Prima spread pals. And I would choose this if I was working in a really small or tight space. Um, I like the scraper because it covers a little bit more area for the size of this stencil, but this could get me small. Let's say I just wanted to isolate just this top medallion right here. I could get a little bit more precision with the spread pal. It's also a flexible scraper tool. So we're going to use the larger one and I'm just going to scrape out a dollop off out of my container. And I'm going to work small areas at a time. So I'm going to hold my stencil down with one hand and I'm going to press this into my stencil. I try not to rub it, overly rub it, because anytime you're rubbing, that gives a chance for it want to, to want to go underneath your stencil. Okay, so I smash it on there, and then I'm going to go at kind of a 45 degree angle and remove the excess. Smash it on, remove the excess. And I make sure I get nice, even coverage, always doing that sort of smash, scrape, smash and scrape. And then once I feel like I have a, I'm, I'm good with this section and I want to move on to another one, I'm going to go ahead and get myself another refill. And I'm going to do that smash. It's great. So I'm not rubbing it over the top of the stencil a whole lot because I don't want to push it underneath those details. And I'm looking for areas, I want to make sure I get it nice and even. Sometimes when you scrape it back, you can scrape it back too much. And so I just come back and do it one more time. Okay, so I did that section. I'll come over here and we'll do another section. Uh, the icing paste, um, I just store it with that lid on and then I can come back and reuse it. I'm going to use it on all the sides of this piece. And I'll use about half of that container, which is about four ounces. Got a little piece of something there, so I'm just going to, I got it out, and now I'm going to do it again. See if I have enough to do this last section. Try to clean off the last of my scraper. These pastes are really nice uh, to have this creamy paste, especially when you'd want to do a raised stencil design. All right now I'm going to look over for any areas that I feel like I want to sort of perfect before I pull my stencil away. Any areas that you know I scraped away or they got a little too thin and I'll fix those. But I don't overwork it. I really try to just do a single pass, smashing that um, paste in and then scraping away the excess. And I'm gonna clean off my tool and I wanna um, make sure that I clean this while it's still fresh too. The other thing I'm gonna do is sort of scrape away my paste from the sides of the container so that it, it doesn't dry weird and crusty on my container. So I sort of cleaned off the edges while it's fresh, scooped it into the center of my container, put the lid back on and store this. And then I wanna clean this while it's still fresh because it does have that, it has an acrylic base and when it dries in the, on the scraper, you can have to kind of scrape it. Easy to wash when it's nice and fresh. All right, you guys wanna see? I'm gonna pull my stencil away. Can you see good? This is where the magic happens. Well, I've got a little piece where it's pulling away. Oh, you know what? It's a dried place of my... Huh, let's fix that before I pull my stencil away. I got sort of a piece of my um, icing paste. Is Yeah, it sort of got stuck in the stencil design, and instead of leaving it on to... Um, so you can see I kind of had a bare area there. I'm just going to fix that really quick. So I didn't pull it away all the way, so my stencil placement is still the same. I'm just gonna grab a fresh spot because that had a little, like a, like maybe a little clump that was on the edge of my container, and then I just can replace it. Okay, so now I can pull this away, and now it left that section behind, looks much better. It's a nice, clean, crisp design with lightly raised edges. And when this dries, um, I'll show you the other side. I want to clean my stencil too. I can usually do about two placements. So if I was doing this around a bunch of different places, I usually do about two and then I'll go rinse my stencil. So I always have a clean stencil. And I'll turn this to the other side so you can see how the icing paste dries. 
right? So that's really pretty. And I know you guys can't see the pearlescence, especially on camera, but I posted a photo on my, on my page of this piece and I turned it just right so the light hit it in a photo and it looks super pretty against that lacy background. So that's just the, the pearlescent, it's frosty pearl icing paste. And the, um, that is also available from your Redesign with Prima retailers as are all of the new papers. So this is the side where it's dry so I can run my hand over it. It has that lightly raised texture. And my paper was already sealed underneath with the decoupage gel over top so I can put this on. I do not need to seal this, okay? It is, it's dried, it's durable. I can, you know, scratch over the top of it. It's not going anywhere. It's super durable. So I did that on both sides on the inside too. And then I've got one up on the top and that all coordinates and wraps around this piece. So I still have a lot of work to do on this piece. I've got to finish all the drawers, but I will have a tutorial for this from start to finish that comes up on my YouTube channel probably next week. Uh, that'll give me time to finish it up, get it photographed, get the video edited, and then get this tutorial up on my YouTube channel so you guys can see how this piece came together, what it looked like when I started all that. Um, so check out the Brush by Brady YouTube channel. I do a, a full tutorial like that over there weekly, and I do have one uh, that will come out. Uh, I need to finish it up today, <laughs> but I do have a new one to put out today too. So I try to put those out weekly for you guys so you have a full start to finish tutorial, and we'll do one with these decoupage papers too. So um, again, we have five or eight of the new large designs, five new stencils, and then 10 of the three packs of coordinating paper. So there's a lot of new decoupage from Redesign in this collection. Um, and I think this is a really cute way to, to use them. And they did the coordination part for me. Uh, we used it on glass, we used the decoupage gel and the icing paste. All of those are available from your Redesign with Prima retailer. Um, I'm gonna let you go. You guys had a fun day of lives all day yesterday showing off the new products and there's more lives coming today. So you guys make sure and check those out. Uh, thank all the artists that are sharing their thoughts and their processes and their creativity. Redesign does a really good job supporting their artists. So thank you to Redesign for having me on today. Um, I'm going to let you guys go and I hope everyone has a great weekend and beautiful weather and I will catch you guys later.